I would bet that by looking right here, you can guess what we're going to talk about today. One of the questions I get asked the most is, how do you clean your precision rifles? And every week I get asked that question. And since it's the middle of August and it's hot as hell outside with 80% humidity, today's a good day to answer that question indoors. Years ago, I took some gunsmithing courses. And when it came to cleaning, one of the first things that they emphasized was that 22s, more 22 barrels have met their death of accuracy from improper cleaning or over cleaning than have ever been shot out. That really kind of stuck with me. So I've always gone with the less is more type of theory when it comes to cleaning precision rifle barrels. I've got four rifles sitting here. My 338 right here. If I shoot about 60, 70 rounds for that thing, I can noticeably see that my accuracy starts to degrade. With my six Creed PRS build right here, this barrel, it'll, it, it's probably the best shooting barrel that I've got. I mean, I, I've shot lots of groups sub quarter MOA with this thing. Um, it, it's, it's my best barrel that I own. But in 250 to 300 rounds, I start to see that fall apart, start going from quarter MOA up to half and 5 eighths MOA. So that's when I know it's time for me to clean the thing. This AR right here, I can shoot that thing, oh, probably up there around 400 um, because I don't run this one suppressed for one thing. That's, that's a huge thing. Um, I also reload for it, so I'm using super clean powder, and I can get 400 rounds out of that thing before it degrades. My next one over here, that 308, that rifle just seems like it will run indefinitely. With my cleaning schedule, it's got to be different for every one of these guns. Now, let's start going through some of this stuff and why I do it the way I do. First things first, let's go over some of the stuff I use. I just buy the big thousand count package of these 35 through 38 cal patches. I cut them down. So there's the full size. Those ones I cut in half for like the six mil through 30 cal stuff. When I'm doing my 22 cal stuff, I cut them in half again. Apparently my pup's getting mad that he's locked up in his kennel. But, uh, you're going to need some patch loops, have to buy some corresponding size jags that match your calibers that you're shooting, and then some brushes. And this is probably where guys really get start getting into the weeds, I should say, on this stuff. I do use bronze bristle brushes and polymer ones. I will say the bronze ones do clean a lot quicker than what your polymer ones do, but I use all of them very sparingly, and I'll talk about that later and my reasons for that. When it comes to cleaners lately, I've been using Shooter's Choice. I feel like this stuff does a pretty good job of taking carbon out uh, and copper. It doesn't do too bad on that, but being that I'm kind of in a in a basement don't have a lot of ventilation that stuff doesn't you know burn your eyes out of your head sitting down here using it either so the biggest thing I'll say is I've used you know Lucas brand products slip 2000 the old sweet 762 the biggest thing I'll say is I like using a cleaner and a lubricant that matches they're made to work together that way they're not fighting each other if I use this cleaner and this lube they're not going to work well together they'll work best as a as a branded pair if i'm changing over from like sierra match kings and going to shooting barns or something like that or if i've been shooting barns especially um, that solid copper i do use sweets to take that copper out a little bit faster those solid coppers definitely plug stuff up quicker. This Slip 2000, this Carbon Killer, I just use this stuff for cleaning my cans out. I use carbon fiber 
cleaning rods. These Tipton brand ones, they've got a bearing in here that'll let that thing swivel. So as you're running it down the barrel, it doesn't unscrew your jag or patch holder. I will run two of them at a time. I got multiples of these. That way I can have a jag on one, patch holder on the other. Just makes it a little bit quicker and easier. Next, for inspecting the bore, I do have, this is my old Hawkeye bore scope. And the other day I went ahead and ordered a test long so I can show you what we're doing here inside these barrels because I'm going to give you a few examples of when and why I do or don't use brushes or you know how I clean my stuff depending on the condition of the barrel itself. Like I mentioned earlier I like to clean barrels in accordance to the life cycle of the barrel. So this here is my brand new rifle so it's got the best looking barrel. Uh, it's as good as it's ever going to get right now. So when I get a brand new gun, um, I'll always pop the bolt out, run a patch down it, um, just to make sure there's no styrofoam or cardboard or anything like that in it from the packaging. I mean, from the factory, almost every manufacturer does shoot at least a round or a couple rounds out of them. I know Seekins does. Um, but after that, yeah, I really don't, uh, I don't clean them too much. Uh, for the break-in cycle at all. I go with just what Seekins kind of prescribes and for the most part always have of just take it out start shooting it. Um, you're gonna break that barrel in either way. If you clean it between every couple of shots maybe it speeds up that break-in process but in the end um, I mean the best shooting rifle I've got I didn't do a break-in procedure for I just took it out and shot the thing. Let's go ahead and take a look down the barrel. Going into the chamber here. Right back in here, there's your neck. Here's your lead. Beginning of the rifling in here. This is as good as it's ever going to look right here. See minimal machining marks in there. way it should be with a premium company. Everything looks real good. So we just do this as reference for when we look at the other barrels here quick. Ed will drop the bolt back in here. Let's take a look at my 308. Because this gun definitely has more rounds through it. I'm going to actually run a few patches through this one. Grab my bore guide here. Put that in there. Turn that, tighten it down. Always make sure keep my caps over my lenses. You don't want to get any of this Sullivan on those lens coatings there. Take a patch, fold it in half, put it through the loop. I also use these pipettes like this to put my cleaning sullivan in. So when you start it in there, I just soak that thing down. Also when you put your gun in, you want it running slightly downhill. And then I always use a paper towel, throw that down there. That way anything that runs out the muzzle will drip into it. And I just take that patch and just ever so slowly just glide that down the barrel. Until it's out the end. On this one we're a little bit short. <laughs> Screw that there, take the patch off, run her back. The other thing I like to do is once we draw that back, take another paper towel, wipe that cleaning rod off, get 
whatever was on that from the barrel, anything it picks up, wipe it all back off. Don't keep just running it down the barrel. At least these carbon fiber rods, they're not supposed to pick up nearly as much carbon as what like an aluminum rod will. That aluminum, that grit just digs in there and you end up turning it into a sanding rod. These aren't supposed to let that just embed in there. When you wipe it off, it doesn't want to stick into it. So that's part of the reason why I use the carbon fiber rods. Now, most of the time, I don't really use patch, or I don't really use uh, uh, brushes here. I just, I'll walk away for five minutes, I'll go over there, uh, do some brass prep work, something like that. Let the chemical do all the work for you. Just let it sit there, do its thing. It'll start working on that carbon, working on that copper. I mean, don't just run a run your next patches down through there on a jag and just wipe it right out. Just give it some time to go ahead and let it do its thing in there. This is the point where I will use some type of foaming bore cleaner that if I've got a muzzle brake on a rifle, you need to get that clean as well. Because you can definitely distort your accuracy if those ports get all carboned up on one side or the other and it's not relieving pressure equally out each side then that pressure being offset to one direction or the other can destabilize the back end of that bullet so I just use this stuff spray it till it squirts out all of those and let that stuff sit that foaming cleaner has all melted down and you can see all the blue that's in there that's all the all the copper once it gets down about that far that's about the time I start running patches down the barrel now I'm gonna go ahead throw a patch on that jag and we're gonna run it down the bore See, that one came out, a lot of copper on there, pretty blue, a little bit of black on there, so still a little bit of carbon. Grab another paper towel here. Wipe that off. run another wet patch down there now for the most part I'm not looking to get this thing perfectly clean especially on the copper side of it I don't need it to be a hundred percent clean the bench rest guys the F class guys I mean they'll get in there with a the brush and just scrub 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 I don't need it to be perfectly clean because I'm going to go out and follow it back up. So I don't need to peel all of that copper out there. In fact, if you leave a little bit of it in there and just get the majority of that carbon and all that out, I mean, you don't have to get it out of all those little cracks and crevices. It'll foul in just a little bit quicker. What you need is the massive buildup taken out of there. That stuff that's really restricting it, it's starting to get a little too caked in there or if you're getting a carbon ring built up in there start building back pressure on there start start spiking your pressures that's when we need to clean that stuff out and just get that out of there we don't need to peel all the copper out unless I'm changing projectiles if I'm going from a match king to a to a barns or something like that that's when I really peel all the carbon out but in this case I'm just I'm just getting the majority of it out of there and I'll show you on the bore scope here in just one second. Okay. Take that patch, run that down through there. On that once I get out there to the end I can feel that 
I'll go ahead and rotate that around a little bit, try to clean out the inside of that muzzle brake right there. Pop it out the end. Yeah, that one definitely got a little bit of black carbon on it from the muzzle brake. Wipe it off again. Now, I'll go ahead and run a patch right away down through it. Yeah. Starting to come out pretty clean here. Go ahead and put the bore scope down and take a look. Okay, let's let's run this thing into the chamber here. There we go. There's our lead. That neck area. You can see where that carbon's building up right there. Too bad yet, but you can pretty much see on this all those little lines in there. And right there is what I want to show you. That's all machining marks in there. But not to worry, because this gun still shoots sub half MOA. Sometimes these bore scopes show you things and guys get all scared. But realistically, I mean, it can look fairly bad and they still shoot. Especially right there. It must have hit a hard spot or something. And that, uh, that button that they use on these Savage rifles must have got some chatter. And then it just kind of fades out. But you can still see the copper mainly in there. A little bit of carbon here and there. But overall, what I'm trying to do is just get, you know, quite a bit of that copper out, but that carbon right in there you can see that section that carbon's just dug in there we're probably going to run a few more patches through there but not too many more since the throat of this barrel is in good condition i mean that is the great thing about a 308 is barrel life is forever on these things this thing has got a lot of rounds in it and it still looks good i mean i've got more than twice as many rounds in this barrel is what I do on this and when we get to this other six creed barrel you'll see a huge difference in the way that it looks but um, cleaning this if we want to speed it up a little bit I'm not afraid to use a brush on this barrel at all but again I just use it sparingly I'll go ahead do the same thing as I did with the other one Put a patch on, get it really good and saturated. Run that through nice and slow. Make sure that it coats everything. Pull the patch off there. Wipe the rivet down every time. Now, if I'm going to use a brush, I always use kind of the stiffest brush or the or the, the largest rod, I should say, that I can use for that caliber that I have because I've got three of these. So this is a 30 cal rod. So I'll put the brush on that one. That way it doesn't flex. And I don't go crazy with this. I'll just do two or three times. Get that stuff rubbed in there. Call it good. Wipe that rod down. I mean, you can see right there. That's the stuff I'm wiping off that rod. You don't want to reintroduce that back into the barrel, so just 
clean it off, wipe it off. That way you're pulling as much out as you can. You're getting everything you can to run down the, the bore. With these brushes, whether you're using a bronze or a polymer bristle one, the barrel is tougher than the brush is. The barrel's going to win. You're not going to do a whole bunch of damage to it running a brush down it constantly if your barrel's in good condition. You have to remember that the bench rest guys that say that they see damage from brushes in there, when they go up, shoot their 10 shots for score, then they're trying to clean this thing as fast as they can. They'll do, you know, 20, 30 strokes with that brush in there trying to clean that as fast as they can because they got to get the gun ready again for the next series of shots that they're going to have to take in the next round of fire. So that's where they see all that damage is because they are. They're, they're running that through there super aggressively. Where for my rifles, if they're staying under sub half, I'm going to be able to hit my targets. I don't need to clean this thing nearly as much as they do. I'm going to kill it from just the number of shots that I put through it in the heat that it has to take, eventually my barrel is going to fire crack out, and that's where running a brush down it will finally finish it off. When you hear a bench rest shooter say that there's damage inside the barrel from using a brush, you have to remember that when they go and shoot for score, then they clean it, they'll take that brush, and because they need to do it in a timely manner, they're going to do 20, 30 strokes back and forth, get that thing cleaned out absolutely as fast as possible. Now, with what I'm doing, <laughs> my rifles aren't hardly ever going to see that much brushing in them. I'm going out and shooting several hundred rounds before I ever clean the thing. I wait till my accuracy degrades. All I need to do is shoot half them away to hit, you know, basically put a round on steel in what I would consider, you know, a kill zone. Those guys are trying to get super finite accuracy out of that gun. They're trying to shoot sub two inch groups at a thousand yards. My rifles aren't made to do that. These are PRS style, you know, tactical style rifles, just putting hits on target. I don't need to hurry up and clean in between there. If mine's shooting half MOA, it's going to do what I ask it to do, and they will do it for a very long time. I don't need to constantly clean my guns. I'll probably shorten this up by uh, running a few patches, a few wet patches, a few dry patches down this off camera just to hurry it up a little bit. Got a few more cases sized. And now we'll run this patch down through there. It's going through pretty good. Very minimal stuff on there. We're probably going to call that good. We leave a little bit of carbon, a little bit of copper right in here. It's not going to be any big deal because in a shot or two, like I'll show you later with the bore scope on the probably using the the 65 um a couple of shots and that stuff gets put right back in there so don't spend all day trying to grind that stuff out of there and get it perfect every time it's pointless in a couple of shots it's going to be back to fouled right up inside here again so all that extra work you put on it just it was kind of a waste of time in my opinion now to finish off our muzzle brake I kind of use a combination of uh, wire brush some q-tips and use some toothpicks to get down in the corners but just kind of take that rub that in there you're definitely not gonna hurt anything by scrubbing that muzzle brake out just got to get all that carbon out of there take a q-tip wipe it down through there you can see there's a little bit on there we've got most of it out if you keep up on this and do this 
more than you do the barrel, most of the time you don't have any problems with it. But if you let that build up and wait till later, you're going to have a real big problem and you're really going to have to chip all that crusted carbon out of there. So stay up on keeping the muzzle brake clean. Now, let's take a look at my match rifle here. This is in six Creedmoor. It is a proof research barrel, which is a single point cut barrel. So it's going to look different just to begin with, but I've already had this chamber set back once where they basically chopped off the threads, cut everything back, pushed the chamber forward because I've already burned it out once. And now I've got about, oh, 1,000, 1,100 rounds through it or so. So you'll see the difference in uh, the wear on this 6 Creed compared to that 308. Now let's take a look in this 6 Creed. So there's the neck area going into the throat. If you notice right here, there is not a distinguishable part <laughs> where the rifling starts in here. This is already getting burned up in here. We're right in there. If you look at all of that, that is fire cracking. And it's that way for about three, three and a half inches. Once we go down the barrel a little further, and we just got a little bit of copper. You don't see any of those little crack marks, any distortion in there. We go back. Things start looking rough in there. This is where we don't want to go real wild with a brush. Because this metal is already degraded from the heat of firing so many times and just getting it hot. Those 10, 12 round strings, you know, there was one course of fire where we had to do 15 in two minutes. That just really burns that stuff up. So having seen that inside the bore in this area where it eases into those riflings where it's basically burned itself off and you see all those little square check markings start in there clear up to about right here on the barrel you can see all that little fire cracking this is when I kind of stop on using the brush it's deteriorating some of the carbon that's in those cracks you don't want to pull that stuff out because that's kind of what's holding some of that material together so I kind of start backing off of it and just using patches down it, using the brush very sparingly because the brush isn't so much doing the damage to it. The brush is just loosening the stuff that is already damaged in it from shooting it. I'm not cleaning it to death. I'm shooting it to death. Now this rifle is quite an old rifle. And uh, it's a little bit different because it has a chromed line barrel. And what I'll show you with this one, set all that aside here, is on a chrome line barrel, you don't really see nearly as much fire cracking down the barrel. You can run a brush down this, that chrome is super hard. But Eventually it gets to a point where that chrome decides it's just going to leave town. And once it starts, then there's no stopping it. So you've got a barrel that shoots well, like this was a 24-inch was a national match barrel. Thing shot great for years and years. But now that chrome lining has started flaking out of there. And if I use a brush on that, I will probably flake more of it out. Let's put the bore scope in it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. 
go down through here is the gas port right here you can tell there's that huge gouge right there past that gas port that stuff starts chipping out that's fairly typical in any AR as that bullet goes by it just starts kind of burning all that stuff off there then I guess some of the other stuff we can look right here when you look at that rifling that chrome is chipped off there that's where some of that accuracy starts to degrade and then I'll show you out here at the muzzle this is also where it's chipped off broke out of there and that's where a real accuracy problem with this barrel comes in this barrel needs replaced Surprisingly, it does still shoot sub MOA, even with that rough pass right there at the end. But it doesn't shoot the 3 8 like it used to. When that chrome lining decides to go, if it chips out, then it just keeps on chipping. When these chrome line barrels just decide to go, they just go. You don't know how many rounds, but it's been an awful lot over the years. I've shot a ton of paper with this thing. Um, a few coyotes, you know, a whole bunch of steel, but this thing has seen a lot of rounds. And it doesn't owe me anything. But it's time to put a new barrel on it and bring that accuracy back in. These chrome line barrels, super easy to clean when they're new. Um, this stuff just wipes right out of them, but this thing is... 20 years old or well 20 plus years old so it's finally gave up the ghost and it's not because of improper cleaning or maintenance to it I mean it hasn't been cleaned a whole lot in its day and it's held right in there the entire time so it doesn't owe me anything but it's time for a new barrel so earlier I showed you the 6.5 Creed I got it as clean as it can get. It's my new rifle, which I'm probably going to do a review on uh, here in a little bit. I've picked up some factory ammo for it. But I'm going to shoot three shots because that's what I got left in this box uh, through the rifle. And then we'll take a look at it through the borescope. I'm just going to fire them blindly into the, into the dirt berm here. I forgot the mag back in the in the basement. All right. Let's take a look down this. Pop the bolt out. Might help. Let's see how dirty this got here. Got to turn the turn the brightness up. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. Might have to go inside and look at it. You got that carbon and that copper and then a couple shots just already sank right back in there. So that's part of the reason why they said in a couple of shots you're going to get carbon built up in that thing. So especially on something like my Savage where it's got all those machining marks, do you really need to get all of that out of there? No. You just don't want to let it sit in there without you shooting it for an extended period of time. 
that's where it'll collect moisture then it'll set in some rust on it with a couple of these rifles I shoot them all the time and if I don't on something like this that is a hunting rifle um, I'll run a patch with oil on it some type of protectant through there and won't have any problems with it barrels like these um, it's a lot smoother barrel most of the time on this or like my proof research it only takes six shots about to sink in uh, my six creed proof on something like my savage it takes a little more like a dozen shots maybe to sink it in settle it all in and then really start shooting its best on these guns that are smoother they clean easier and they foul up quicker if you liked what you saw here today hit that like button comment share maybe even subscribe if you want I got a lot more videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.